Hey guys, uh, you're in for a real treat tonight. Uh, Troy and I just got done talking to Elias Theodoro, who's an MMA fighter and is um, has the, the world's only uh, therapeutic use exemption for cannabis and professional sports. So he can use uh, cannabis to uh, medicate his conditions during training and up to fights with any, with any repercussions like before. Um, he's done that in Canada and now he's uh, just also gotten that um, in Colorado. So now he can fight in the United States and he has a plan to, uh, expand from that and, uh, do something that can kind of go viral with allowing this for not only for himself, but, uh, other athletes in MMA and in other sports. This could be, this could really change the faith the face of athletics. So anyhow, we talked tonight, uh, about, uh, everything from his cannabis routine to, uh, his first fight ever when he was a kid to uh, his plan for universal dominance. You're going to love this one. We have a lot of laughs and uh, Troy and I learned a lot. Uh, make sure to watch it all the way in. It's, it's good stuff. We beat up on these mighties all night. So thanks again for watching. Thanks I'm good. For thanks for yeah, thanks for uh, my pleasure. Not only just uh, you know doing it, but really you know thinking of it, man. Thanks a lot. I appreciate you, man. My pleasure. It's been a lot man. of fun talking to you today, bud. My pleasure. Please, please to meet you, Elias. A pleasure to meet you as well, Troy. That's right. I'm sorry. How rude of me, Troy. Elias. <laughs> Elias. Troy. <laughs> <laughs> So man, uh, you get, uh, how do we? How should we kick this fucking thing off, Troy? I was gonna say, uh, normally with our with our interviews and, and stuff, we we kind of just treat it more like a casual sesh uh, conversation. So I encourage you I'm to always ready. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Pack your your mighty, ask us questions, and take control of the conversation. Whatever, like see where it goes. What do you have? What do you have in your in your stash? What What are you vaping on tonight? We got Doctor Who. Uh, right here, and then uh, this is we got lemon pie right here. Doctor Who's my favorite, though. Doctor Who is that what you yeah. use as your, your therapeutic it's, medicine, like your daily training type of stuff? One of them, one of them for sure. Doctor Who, uh, Agent Orange, the one that uh, Choclo is, uh, is a really good, really good, really good, uh, in uh, in my daily dose. But you know, it's all green, it's all lean, it's all clean. <laughs> Um, and obviously, uh, those are the, the, the type that I, um, I vaporize with, um, with the mighty, uh, with the volcano, any other type of, uh, stores and vehicle product that I, I basically have handy. I have a, a million of them, but, uh, even in my, even, even beyond, uh, vaporizing, I actually, uh, obviously do drops, uh, tinctures, but also, um, I do raw cannabis as well. So I actually put okay. uh, raw cannabis in my uh, smoothies pretty much every other day um, and actually uh, treat it like uh, any other type of kale. Um, and that way you can actually get all the anti-inflammatory properties uh, right in your day without any of the, the quote unquote high, if you will. Um, but all of the anti-inflammatory properties that uh, cannabis uh, provides. That's fascinating. I've been meaning to actually dive down that route as well. Uh, I wanted to ask you, so you're sponsored by Stores and Bickle, right? Yes, sir. So does, does that affect your your choice of consumption and, and vaporization at all? Or um, would you choose? Yeah, I actually been choosing them way long before I was sponsored. Um, it kind of happened after the fact. My one, my really good uh, friend, former coach, uh, mentor, he's the one that got, got me, not necessarily got me into cannabis, uh, more really uh, kind of a, show the uh, medical properties because uh, he was a patient or is a patient for over a decade now. And during my my upbringing in mixed martial arts, I saw his use of cannabis and um, his need for it as a patient. Um, and then, you know, especially when we would travel and he wasn't able to access his medicine uh, and he had to, be, you know, go to first line medicines. And I saw the detriment that, that did to his body. But I saw his evolution um, in vaporization, uh, and it always had, had been actually stores and Bickle. Um, so my whole upbringing to cannabis, uh, and vaporizers have been uh, stores and Bickle products, uh, whether it was the volcano or the uh, crafty originally, 
and then I had to upgrade for the uh, mighty myself. <laughs> yeah, that's dope, dude. In fact, we, uh, it's perfect timing, Elias, because we, we we did a show on Friday on the mighty, and we couldn't stop talking about the damn thing, and we didn't finish. So we have to continue next week, and we get you right in the middle. But we we were hitting a mighty and a crafty at the same time, and and I thought of you because I. Two days ago, I built this and I've been hitting it ever since. Oh my God. And this is the way to go, bro. It's the double yeah. mighty. Oh my God. It's fucking killer, man. We got to get you yeah. on. This is great. It's double the therapy. It. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Double. If less is more, think of much more is. This will be we, fun. I love this. The, the, uh, the mighty and the crafty, the two fist moment was, was special. Was uh, and it. It got me far more medicated than I anticipated. That's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. Like, it's not that big a bowl. It's not bigger than we're used to. It just puts art on it. it. It knocked us both out, for sure. Speaking of knockouts, speaking of knockouts, uh, we also talked a few weeks ago about Jerry's first fight and Jerry's only fight. Jerry's only been in one one fight, and it's from the sounds of it, like he scratched somebody like, like a cat. And, oh, and he hasn't he hasn't been any altercation since. Uh, but I want I want to know about Elias's first fight. How how young were you? How did it go down? What what were the terms? Yeah, how much did you get I, paid? Well, it's actually it's actually a funny funny story. Like how I got into mixed martial arts to begin with. So I, I wasn't necessarily uh, prone to fights. About I think it was um, grade ten. I was walking with a couple girls. And someone, someone in my class, uh, this is going to be a very Canadian story because uh, it's going to break out into snowball fights. So uh, it was like July and it was obviously snowing still. No, um, but basically um, walking and uh, some kid from my class was throwing snowballs at me. And I used to play baseball for many years. So I got a wicked right arm. And I, and I, he started throwing a couple and I thought we were playing around. So uh, I started to throw some back and I just nailed him in the face every single time. And he got really <laughs> upset. He got really upset about it. And I didn't realize because we were kind of like friendly. We're not like friends, but we were like acquaintances in uh class, right? And then he just kind of comes, comes running at me and um he knocks me down and he starts to try and like fight me kind of thing. The the, the girl that I was walking with um uh she kind of uh kind of got in the way and he pushed her and that's when i was like hey what are you doing and then it kind of got like i i, I kind of like um was trying to fight him at that point but then he kind of had a couple other friends and they kind of like broke it off didn't think anything of it the next week i think that was like a fighter or something like that the next week turned out what he was doing was he was waiting for his uh cousin who was like the big get kid in school um very older or whatever like that they, they cornered me Half the school kind of came to watch us fight. And I, I was like, hey, man, uh, you know, you were in the wrong. The moment passed. Like, this doesn't make any sense. I tried to walk away. His cousin grabbed me, sucker punched me, threw me into him. And he went to go hit me. And it was there that I kind of, um, a light went off. And again, another Canadian aspect of it. I, I just, I snapped. Snap. I jerseyed him. <laughs> And I just started uppercutting him and just like beating him like to a bloody pulp. And to the point where like he like, again, just totally bamboozled him. I gave him like 20 punches, like pure like hockey jersey, just 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 beat the living crap out of him. It, it like broke out into something bigger because like my friends, older brothers were there and this, that and the other, whatever. It eventually got toned down. But um, to kind of like uh, date where this uh, is all headed, basically somebody filmed it on their razor. And that happened again on like a, a Friday, exactly. And then, <laughs> so it's like two forty by two forty, like exactly, no exactly. pixels at all. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then is this still out there? Like we need that, to see it. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yes. Um, I, 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 I would, I doubt it. But so it, it went around school, and I started getting, uh, like, I got a little popular because of that, and then that became like my identity. Like I, oh, Lyson kicks some ass. And then, uh, you know, I became a legend of my own mind. Um, so then I wasn't Mr. Uh, I didn't start fights, um, I, but I definitely finished them. I got in a lot of high school fights from then on. Uh, thought I was, uh, you know, too cool for school. 
at my first university, you know, undefeated in high school. Uh, you know, my, my the mean streets of uh, the suburbs of <laughs> Toronto. Uh, but um, uh, <laughs> long story short, badass man, yeah, you're exactly. a badass Troy. Legend, That's what we're trying uh, to say. <laughs> a legend in my own alone mind. Um, but uh, I, I, I went to the local watering hole and um, picked a, a fight with someone that <laughs> who was um, uh, wasn't as let's say uh thirsty as i was uh, that evening uh at a local bar who picked a fight with one of my friends i uh decided to jump in 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 kind of take uh take it on for him and uh but first thing I, i'm just obliterated okay. the first move i do is a superman punch uh <laughs> a superman punch a drunk off the curb, superman punch. Uh, off the curb I slip and I fall. I slip and I fall. He kicks me in the face. He kicks me in the face. I get up, like again, I'm obliterated. Rip off my shirt like the Incredible Hulk. Rip off my shirt like the Incredible Hulk. He, he at this point, he wants nothing to do with me. He gets into cabs. I start chasing. Yeah, it's just shirtless. This long, kind of the same hair. Like my so whole. You, I, like, you Superman just, punch him. You, you try. You fall yeah. on your face. Then you rip your shirt. Off. I get up. Long story short, that was filmed, and that wasn't as uh, badass as the other one. It, that it one was, we got to get though. We got to get that one. It but went that viral. Out there? It okay, went viral. we're gonna find that one. It was called Boot to Face. And <laughs> it was called Boot Shit. to Face. <laughs> Can you see it, like, it? It was, it was like it was like on one of those like world star like uh, viral videos. Yeah. And um, long story short, it was um, it went viral uh, on one of those like weekly like world star things. And um, basically, what ended up happening was, you know, my first defeat. Was seen by like a million people, oh, and this, <laughs> so mortified, mortified. I uh, nameless, so, nameless, right? Na- na- like, yeah, boot to face. That's all that was. No, he's boot to face, yeah, man. Everybody knows so you weren't. <laughs> you weren't Elias yet. You, did you have the long hair? Did you? Did you, did you look the same? Shirtless. Uh, <laughs> Which proves to be anybody. a good defense, by the way. Like that's that's the ultimate defense. If you don't want to fight, take off all your clothes. Exactly. No one, no one is gonna fight a naked dude. <laughs> no one wants to fight the naked dude. <laughs> so mortified, I um, I confide. I just mortified. I um, I confide in my dad, and I'm like, Dad, this is what happened. What do I do? And he goes, Well, you love that UFC stuff so so much. Why don't you go to the gym and make sure it never happens again? And I did. <laughs> right on, then, dad, man. Yeah, I know, right? And then uh, you know, obviously, I centered myself a little bit, uh, and you know, a lot less uh, shirtless uh, stupors. Uh, than uh, that that you know one night, but um, you know if I saw that guy today, I'd probably buy him lunch or dinner. <laughs> what, what year was that? Uh, I, I want to say that was it was like 2010. 2010. Okay. Right. 2010. Boot to face. 2010. Boot to face. Boot boot to face. Boot to face. Boot to face. Oh, I get a boot to face. <laughs> Oh my gosh, does anybody in uh, MMA call you boot to face? <laughs> no, no, luckily not too many people know about that. Oh, They're all going to know now. You can change bro. that. Everyone's That's gonna know. done. Change that. Hit that share button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it was, a, it was a, uh, what is it? What do you call it? A white eater. So you couldn't, yeah, you couldn't, it's not really noticeable now. Yeah, so that's how I got into MMA. <laughs> wow. But so, but so your first run with cannabis was later on, like, like from your, from your mentor, not, not like when you were 12 or 16 or nothing like that. Yeah. yeah much later. Um, I, 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 uh, I dabbled with, uh, cannabis in high school, um, a couple times, definitely for sure. Um, there mm-hmm. definitely was a, a year or two that I, I would with a bunch of my friends, um, more recreational, you know, uh, Canada actually has some of the, uh, the highest, um, youth, uh, cannabis um youth rates 
uh, in the world. Um, and that's mm. part of the reason why we actually uh, we uh, legalized it um, in the way that we did uh, nationally. Um, because again, uh, again, it's 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 a little bit better in the capacity of you know taking things out of prohibition and you know regulating it and you know having uh, some type of uh, you know legalization in the capacity of uh, instead of having it in the uh, you know the negative aspects of uh, prohibition and you know in the darkness, if you will, um, gotcha. where because it, it was always easier to get. It was always easier to get cannabis, uh, or if you like, rather, it was always easier to get weed than it was to get alcohol um, growing up. Mm. Um, but oh, um, point being, uh, I didn't, uh, especially when I started in martial arts and I really started taking it serious, I, uh, I stopped uh, using cannabis in any way, shape, or form because I thought they were mutually exclusive uh, being an athlete um and cannabis right so it wasn't until uh i i i got to see my coach and and basically see him as a patient as an athlete uh and actually as a mentor explaining the properties of cannabis and how it helps with him and then eventually with me and my condition of bilateral neuropathy which is essentially nerve damage of my upper extremities and uh using cannabis as a medicine a medicine uh, that is better than the first time medicines that I was forced to take in the process of getting my therapeutic use exemption, um, which allows cannabis to be recognized as not only a medicine, my medicine. Dude, that's dope. The, uh, the use exemption thing. So unless I screw this up, you're the first professional athlete to be granted therapeutic use exemption for cannabis while you're training and even up to the fight is that is that right yeah in competition so basically cannabis is considered cannabis is considered a prohibited substance right mm -hmm. in because of its outdated look it's very much considered like a steroid and part of that has mm -hmm. to do with obviously it's schedule one drug in the u.s and that kind of dictates all of the other governing bodies and the way they kind of look at it so cannabis especially when i was with the US, ufc it was a prohibited substance and people were suspended um especially during potentially uh with certain commissions for years uh even longer than actual steroids which is crazy no shit wow yeah yeah figures there's there's a couple of famous examples where two two athletes would would be flagged one with an actual steroid and one with cannabis and the person with cannabis got suspended longer <laughs> that's nice wow yeah but again it's that outdated man mindset mm -hmm. it's that that illegality it's the, it's the schedule one drug clarification so I, I i received my therapeutic use exemption in bc and i'm actually really excited i'm kind of uh kind of letting the the, the cat out of the bag but i'm really excited to say that i actually i just received my first therapeutic use exemption in the u.s and i will be explaining that uh, and announcing that in the near future um Dope, because I, will be fight, I will be fighting in the u.s soon uh and uh for more history uh and i found a way to basically uh what's it called skirt around the federal ban and uh make history so that now ath athletes in the u.s can build off of my precedent and then start pollinating the rest of the jurisdictions and the rest of uh the country uh their own way so uh, made history in Canada, made history in the U.S., and uh, soon the world. Dude, congratulations. Hell yeah, That's congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, rock the fuck on. Hell yeah. Sweet, well, where'd you, where'd, you get it, uh, where'd you get it done? Well, I'm really excited to say that I got it done in Colorado. Colorado nice. is uh, accepted my therapeutic use exemption on the merits, and they gave me a very well-detailed reason uh, why. And uh, the great, like, I don't know, it's irony or poetic justice, but when I first applied for a therapeutic use exemption with the UFC, it was denied by USADA, which is headquartered in Denver. Oh, no and shit. then three years later, I get approved for the history in all of Colorado. <laughs> wow. That's hilarious. Wow. So now you can use that to springboard elsewhere in the US. Yep. And, well, and start, like you said, pollinating, huh? Exactly. Exactly. And 
<laughs> and the really cool thing is they were so, like, I couldn't be more thankful for the commission. Uh, they were very open-minded. It was a very, very, uh, not speedy, but like very, very prudent process. They, they respected the doctors that I had were, um, hmm. USADA, for instance, they were not respectful to the doctors or the science, if, if we're really being honest, because they were always pigeonholed and kind of like shackled to the fact that USADA is funded by the United States government. And the United hmm. States government doesn't look at cannabis as a medicine. So it was always an uphill battle. What they wanted me to do was, it, it's called exhaust all other medicines. So my doctor, my doctor, who I've had my whole life, my family doctor, literally prescribes me cannabis because it's the medicine that we describe, that he and we decide is best for me, for my condition of bilateral neuropathy. But then these other bureaucrats and doctors say, no, that's fine. Cannabis might work better or might, <laughs> you might say this about cannabis, but because of the classification that our funders, the United States government says, um, you now have to do what's called exhausting every other medicine. So I basically had to try every other medicine under the sun, every painkiller, every opioid, every uh, Vicodin, this, that, and the other what for the like, uh, to the point where I did it for, I did a, I think a cycle of like five different um, pills, let's say for like three weeks each. Uh, and they said, no, nope, they all have to be for nine weeks. So they literally oh have God. to do every single crappy drug to the point where like SSRIs, like my doctor, my, again, this is my family doctor who I've had my whole life. Like he knows me better than I know me. Like I've had, literally had him since I was probably two. Um, wow. So uh, long story short, to the point where we got to like SSRIs, where it's basically antidepressants. And they're like, and my doctor's like, we stopped prescribing this for people for oh, this, Jesus. like in the 90s. <laughs> He's like, we stopped, like, we stopped prescribing this in the 90s. Like, well, all they're trying to do is numb the whole thing. Like, well, like, it, like it's it's a very backwards mentality. And it's unfortunate because again, it, it's it's a bias that doesn't look at cannabis as a medicine because of this this classification of cannabis being a schedule one drug, which is, you know, ironically, I think it's like less than heroin because, you know, the pharmaceuticals have heroin on lock. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's the truth. It's fucked up. Damn. It really is. Oh, yeah. So oh, the amazing thing is um, <clears throat> we found a way with my counsel and I, Eric McCracken, and I um, were able to take what we did with USADA, what we did with uh, the British Columbia government who approved my therapeutic use exemption previously uh, and where I fought my last fight and won. And that commission, again, they were, uh, sorry, in Canada and BC specifically because we have medical cannabis rights. And we also have medical rights more broadly speaking. So it's afforded to us by our fundamental rights. Um, so I was able to argue a fundamental right. Um, in Colorado, um, I am I argued based on, uh, again, the precedent and the, the previous paperwork from all those doctors. And they were o able to look at it open-mindedly and uh, come to the conclusion that we satisfied the, the requirements for a therapeutic use exemption. So made history once again um, as the first cannabis athlete, not only in Canada, but now in the US, working around the Schedule One drug uh, classification that the US government has and creates precedent, not only for myself, but now other US athletes will be able to apply for their own therapeutic use exemption if appropriate. And obviously it's up to the commission to uh, deem what uh, is appropriate or not, but uh, it's good to know that the Commission of uh, Colorado is an honest, uh, an honest and, um, you know, uh, potential opportunity for athletes to uh, medicate with cannabis as prescribed by their doctors. Uh, and again, uh, looked at as a medicine in a way that hasn't been uh, done before and, and again uh, obviously everybody and every body 
is different. So some people definitely need prescription drugs uh, in the capacity of opioids and painkillers. And other people like myself uh, need a plant, medical cannabis. And uh, uh, now the history has been made to uh, allow cannabis uh, to be looked at as a medicine in uh, professional sports. So when you go to uh, Colorado, you're, you're gonna you're gonna find some Colorado's finest for for your medicinal purposes while there. How, no are, doubt. how are you gonna How are you gonna select? Like, what's your selection process like? Well, especially when, um, when you don't know the strains, like the when you don't have like your your known Canadian menu there. Um. Well, I would definitely say there's two different aspects that I I tend to do. Uh, during the day, I'm more of a you know upbeat. Like obviously, I stay away from the the concepts of pure sativa. I, I'm in the capacity because again, um, you know the leaves don't necessarily dictate uh, the actual strain itself. Obviously, each strain is different. Um, I, anything that's upbeat in the, during the day, uh, I, I'm high functioning. Uh, and to be honest, I use cannabis probably to uh, self medicate a little bit with uh, ADD. It allows me to, to focus a little bit more, but uh, for my medicine more specific, specifically, um, during the day, I, I use more um, uh, sativa slash hybrid. And then in the evenings, it's more uh, for the uh, the aspect of, you know, sleep and rest, or and that's when I'll do the more indicas, uh, indica heavy uh, towards the end of the night. And then actually, uh, because I do really love to dream and and cannabis kind of uh, does make you forget your dreams a little bit. I actually, uh, I do a lot, uh, a super dose on a lot of CBD, which actually counteracts any of the uh, the THC uh, that kind of uh, makes you forget uh, your dreams. Oh, interesting. How yeah, about dabs? It, you, do, you do any dabs? I, I do when I don't, uh, not as much as uh, I, I, pure flour is what I, I tend to use, to be really honest. Uh, I'll actually do hash. Um, I do a lot of hash, if anything. Uh, there, there's uh, a couple of cool uh, hookahs, and even Jerry and I are talking uh, to, uh, uh, well, he hooked me up with a really cool cat that uh, we're going to be uh, probably creating something, uh, some really good glassware for my new place um, once I move in. So I know you love your glass. What's your favorite piece, man? There's a couple of cool ones that I have. Like, again, there's... It, a lot of it has to do with me going like experiences and places like I pick up different pieces like every time i go somewhere cool somewhere uh I, like a lot of uh, the glassware that i have is all uh different experiences that i have so like i have some cool ones for instance i like i found a, a really cool glass bong in greece of all places i found a really cool uh yeah yeah a really cool one in in thailand as well like there's places all over the world that uh, I've been able to travel. Like a lot of the glassware that I grab, it tends to be, um, or you know, even pipes too. You know what I mean? Like I was like, oh, this is neat. I want this, and I'll just take it. <laughs> well, I'll buy it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was <laughs> just like, I'm just gonna take this. <laughs> can you see me on the Amazing Race, Canada? <laughs> Don't let him in your store. My shirt. And I just rip off my shirt. <laughs> He'll never recognize me now. <laughs> That's dope. So when's your next fight, man? Well, the game plan is um, to actually do it probably um, around the uh, the timing of legalization's anniversary in Canada, which is October 17th, because I want to be the great Canadian export. So October 17th is kind of the game plan. Um, there are a couple other projects that I'm working on right now that kind of will dictate that, but um, we'll see. What do you think of all this like exhibition style influencer versus fighter stuff that's been going on like the way that the way the the cultures and spaces are, are merging and expanding becoming it more of like it, entertainment yeah it is what it is it's kind of been doing that for the last little bit right like it's less um i don't know it kind of becomes less of a sport more sport entertainment um but it's kind of been like that um the ufc is very much a sport entertainment the whole um rankings don't really mean anything there's been examples with uh, pop, uh, you know, popularity kind of dictating who's getting titles. Uh, they brought CM Punk, for instance. Um, Lesnar himself is uh, obviously he he has a background in uh, wrestling and he proved himself to be a, cha a formidable champion um, in the heavyweight division. But um, 
you know, I think that's kind of what it is. Attention is attention. And that's what, uh, you know, fighting or any type of conflict is, right? Like, that's what competition is. It's it's kind of uh, bringing a narrative and a story. That's what, um, you know, uh, a lot of a lot of the sports kind of were created uh, to, to build some type of uh, regional attention and uh, attention uh, to the fans. Right. Goes back to uh, <clears throat> Greece and uh, all of the stuff there. And you're you're from Greece, right? You like your Greek? That I am. Yeah. Well, that's where the whole shirt off option is always. There small. needs to be. Yeah, <laughs> there needs to be like a, a, a cannabis fighting, like where both fighters do like five dabs, like right before the the start of the match, and then they have to. They have actually high rollers. Uh, so it's kind of like the, the high rollers is a jiu-jitsu competition where they, they basically, it's either a bong or a joint or whatever it ends up being. Look it up. It's really cool. I have a couple of their shirts, actually. They're really cool swag. But basically, you you got to get high before you can, you roll. <laughs> yeah, oh, nice. That was a must. I, I took some Brazilian jiu-jitsu classes and I, I always had to get high before that class. <laughs> just for the Just for the social anxiety of it, honestly. Because I'm not a I'm not a people person, and touching rolling with other people was not not my thing. So. <laughs> Fair Give me some weed for that. Give me some weed, and I'll roll around with you. But no, <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> uh, I took some uh, some Tai Chi for a bit, and uh, man, I used to get high before every one of those. That was great. Like I don't know Tai Chi without weed. That was just the whole point was to go down there. And yeah, yeah. Now I think I want to look at some, what is it, Kijong? I want to start looking into some of that. So Nice. Check that action out, man. Um, I don't remember any of the legacy questions right now. So if you start with the first one, I'll probably remember one of the other ones. We'll probably remember them for sure, man. We'll get it. So so the, the premise is this, buddy. Every time we have uh, somebody to interview, we're going to ask you a question. And then you get to uh, ask a question back. <laughs> And those questions will be asked to everybody else who shows up. So like your question, we're going to ask the next, the next person who comes on, they're going to get that too. So it's kind of like a legacy thing. So we're now like about four deep into this thing. So we basically got like four or five questions to ask you, and then you're going to tack on the last one. And then we're all going to hmm. answer that one. It's pretty funky. It's kind of cool. Okay. okay. Um, the, the first guest that we had was uh, Pranav. All right. So the first question is, if you could pick an animal to sesh with and oh, this right is on. this is like hypothetical situation animals can like talk and converse yeah with. fuck yeah i love this question like, Bo, like bojack if you could have like one animal sesh with, who would be sesh with? uh i'm torn i want it's either gonna be man's best friend or like a monkey like, <laughs> like <laughs> uh, i'm torn i uh, probably man's best friend Probably my dog. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. You want to know if you know him or not? Do if you really actually know, do? I do we do it? If I got you down, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, no shit. All the questions. That, that's what we should do, Jerry. We sometimes we should get high and and write down all the questions we would ask our dog if we could talk to our dog. I bet we can come up with some good ones. Before we do the next legacy question, I want to ask you something else that's animal related, since you're you got animals on your mind. Uh, you're familiar with the, the Canadian goose? For sure. Like the, the it's our, goose. our national anthem. Or yeah. National, uh, well, beaver is, I think, technically. Or the moose. Yeah. <laughs> Damn straight. Uh, anyway, um, would you rather fight 150 geese or one 150-foot goose? Oof. And this dude's a fighter, so it actually means something what he says. I'd probably take on the, the smaller animals for sure. No shit. 150 pound? Wait, no, 150 pound. 150, 150 foot. Big. 150 foot 50 goose. Foot. Oh no, yo, that that would just be able to squish me. No, no. I I I'd <laughs> want I no. Uh, no way. I would definitely take on the 150 uh geese. Break You'd rather have a hundred uh, 150 of them though. And That's they're all fine. pissed and the they're cardio. all trying to fucking I kill got you. The cardio. I can break some necks real quick. <laughs> have you ever been attacked by a goose? Yeah. 
it is a daily occurrence out here. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know my geese. Give me the one fifty now. I'll take the one fifty now. You don't. You don't start with any weapons, but I think uh, like I've, order, I've thought about right this. here. Law and order, right here. <laughs> well. I was thinking, I mean, I'm, I'm not a professional fighter, but I, I would think like if you grab the first two by the neck, you now have two geese weapons. Like you have goose chucks, you know, you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Their necks will go real quick. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So it's not I a good weapon. Kicking. Yeah. <laughs> I just start kicking, stomping, just jumping up and down. You just start squishing them. You ain't doing that with the not real motor, <laughs> No, I can't. No, you can't. You ain't grabbing. How would you nothing. go after the 150 footer, man? You just right underneath it and go for the hung there, right? Right in between. I think you would. You would. It, it would it's probably try to tall. peck you, and you would have yeah. to like dodge and like grab its neck. You can't get around. Oh, you're the doing neck. the whole. Mar- he's doing it like he's Mario. He's got a whole Mario thing going in there, you know, like moves and tactics, and then and then I can do this and <laughs> gotta jump. Then I gotta triple jump on your head. Yeah, then he's I get a professional punch. fighter though. He can. He Superman jump. He Superman punch people off the curb. <laughs> Rip off your shirt. Come at me, you fucking goose. <laughs> this is boot to face. He can do anything. What are you talking about? Man? Look at this covered. <laughs> okay, so 150. Uh, okay, so he's taking 150 of them. All right, good enough. And that wasn't a legacy question. That was just <laughs> no, it's just for your own. That's just that sheer just bonus, sure. man. That's just pure <laughs> own bonus, folks. You're welcome. That was a bonus straight from Troy, man. So then it went to George, right? He was the next one, Troy. Yeah. And George, George went with uh... describe a point in time, preferably the future, when you're going to be the happiest. I would like to hear a description from a person thinking about the point in time that they're going to be the happiest. What are the circumstances? How did it happen? How how did you arrive at that point? I'm the happiest. Um, yeah. I'd probably say in the gym, sweating, um, sweating, putting uh, work in with uh, training partners, coaches. Um, I love what I do. You know, fighting is... Uh, it's an interesting uh, sport. It's an interesting um, career. Um, it's my passion. Uh, obviously, uh, there's no bigger, like, cathartic almost uh, feeling of winning in front of, like, the biggest crowd I fought in front of was about 29,000 people in Texas. So um, there's no bigger feeling uh, than, you know, that relief of all that hard work, the last 20 years that kind of go into the fight. There are a lot of nerves that go with it, but um, the the happiest would definitely be those blood, sweat, and tears that kind of go in on the mats um, before all the, the the fans and the the people, the more people watching at home and any of the admiration. Uh, it's kind of like the, the hard work, that, and and that's where the fun is. Where like you know you're 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 coming together with your team, even though it's an individual sport. Um, it takes an army to kind of get ready for war. Then the next question after George was uh Sabo? Okay. Yeah, Sabo Sabo is the, the founder of the Vape Exhale uh Cloud Evo. True. Company. Yep. Yeah, you're familiar with that vape? Yep. Uh, awesome, awesome gentleman. Uh he asked, he wants he wants to know My question is intuition or logic and why? What do you lean on more? Intuition or logic and why? I'd say intuition. Um, I kind of go with my gut, um, whether it's, you know, getting to the mixed martial arts uh, and kind of running with it. I literally, uh, on an intuition, I got a degree in advertising. I had the opportunity to go to a marketing degree or like, use my marketing degree for a job. And my parents, like, I remember this vividly after I got my degree, my parents were like, hey, you got your degree. What do you want to do? I'm like, I'm going to Thailand. I'm like, what? And I'm like, yeah. I'm going to people. They're like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm kick some ass in Asia, man. Here we go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So then I just disappeared <laughs> for like three months. <laughs> and I fought three times and I was like, yeah. And then like, uh, they paid me. They paid me for my fights. It was like, it was like 3,000 baht, which is like a couple hundred bucks. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like,
you know how much food that can buy in Thailand? What can I get with so that? much food. I'm a millionaire. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mean, tired here. Yeah, exactly. No, but it, Thailand's a beautiful place. It's a really amazing place. But um, no, I, I kind of I I did that and never turned back to the point where uh, on up intuition. I kind of well, I kind of gave myself. I still grounded myself in some kind of logic uh, in the capacity of I kind of gave myself to 25 to get into the UFC and kind of be able to make a, a career out of fighting. And uh, I was able to, uh, again, uh, become, go undefeated um, to about, I think it was 9-0 uh, uh, into the Ultimate Fighter. Um, and I was I became the first Canadian to win the Ultimate Fighter and in the UFC uh, before my uh, 25th birthday. Nice. It's huge. Ass then, early, man. And then even in with my uh, my fight with cannabis in the capacity of um, I'm very I'm quite certain uh, my my tenure with the UFC was cut short because of my stance and because of my um, determination to continue fighting for not only mine but uh, all athletes uh, you know right to medicate as prescribed by their doctors and um, you know I, I think now having my second victory uh, in in the in the fight for medical equality. Um, I think the long arc of uh, history um, is bending in the right direction, and I, I'm honored and humbled to play my my part of it. it. This isn't just for me; it's it's for all athletes, and more importantly, the plant um, to be recognized as for what it is, medicine. Um, and as other organizations and other uh, sports start removing cannabis from the prohibited list altogether, which is a great great part but there also needs to be um validation that cannabis is a medicine and i'm glad to be doing my part uh, and just to kind of clarify the two the two uh therapeutic use exemptions that i've received for my my case um from both commissions because the commissions are actually run by the the governing bodies they're actually the first time lo those local governments recognize cannabis in sports so this is actually another medical cannabis rights, both in BC, where I got my original one, and now Colorado as well, because it is is the uh, the governing body, uh, the state of Colorado uh, governs over the uh, uh, the commission that runs uh, athletics for both boxing and MMA. This isn't just uh, about uh, MMA. Wow, so this is pretty big news for for cannabis in general cannabis and sports yep. yeah i guess yep. other athletes can immediately start using your precedent correct yep yep and then uh, there's a couple other um, uh, jurisdictions uh, we're in contact to contact with uh and hopefully uh now that colorado has approved it uh, other jurisdictions and locations will start um you know looking to this precedent uh, in the u.s uh, in addition to the precedent that I have in uh, British Columbia as well. Nice. Dominoes are falling. Thank you. I guess uh, in the <laughs> U.S., then it gets started right here and now because of you. So thanks, dude. That's fucking dope. Yeah, Literally. Dope. <laughs> I love it. So then you were you you vaped on a mighty like uh, at the weigh-in and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. and all, yeah, that's Weigh-ins leading up to it, everything in between. <laughs> that's killer. We got one more. Nothing in there. Were there two more? Was Not Ed just yet. was Ed was Ed the last one, Troy, or was there another one after that? I don't remember Ed's <laughs> question. Do you remember Ed's question? Ed 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 wanted to know what what you wanted your legacy to be. Is that right? Oh, yeah. Did I get so, that right? Or, or think, what is your legacy, or what did you want it to be? I, which was it, Troy? I don't know. I it, think it's what you wanted to be. You know, what, what, what do you want your legacy to be? And then that's what Elias just just answered <laughs> without any, without another right? question. <laughs> well, look, we already did that, jackass. What's next? <laughs> yeah, well, I uh, guess making like, cannabis. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, yeah well, I guess um, so, uh, kind of being recognized as someone that you know fought for you know the cannabis side of history, which is the right side of history. Right on, man. Right on. It's a good. It's a good position. That's a good good placement. Yeah, that's a good legacy. It's already there. 
Dude's vaping in Celsius up there too. I saw that one. <laughs> I, I switched my mighty to Celsius when I saw his. I'm like, oh, I'm going to put mine in Celsius just for you the rest of the show. How do you do it? Both buttons at once? Both arrows. <laughs> it's got to be doing it now. Shit. Well, I do it uh, because pretty- you know why I do it? Because that's my, what what weight I uh, yes, fight right. at. That's <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, I'll, that's- I'll- I'll just keep mine in Fahrenheit. I was about to say, that's why I'm doing Fahrenheit. Sure. <laughs> it only goes to 210 in Celsius. <laughs> that's great. Oh, that's funny shit, man. I love it. So we need we need you to give us a question that uh-huh. we'll ask future guests. So it can be a crazy, it can be inspirational, it can be something deep and connected. <laughs> well... I, I think, uh, you know, I, mine has kind of been uh, dictated for me. If you could fight one person dead or alive, who would it be? <laughs> fight one person Ooh, dead or fight alive. Fight one person? Yeah. I don't want to fight anybody. Now I got to fight somebody for that? I got to fight one person, huh? Oh, it's going to be somebody weak, man. Somebody I can <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, man. Urkel. I'm fighting. I'm whooping Urkel's ass. <laughs> he's, no, man. Have you seen him? He no, just came out with his own cannabis he's strain. TV Urkel. Yeah, I want TV Urkel. 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 No, you can't do that. <laughs> he's still alive. Well, I mean, technically, Urkel never existed. So, uh, all right. So, that's supposed to be a real person? Real person dead or alive? I don't know. I mean, because, yeah, you know. Purple Urkel. Purple Urkel yeah. looks dope. Like, the, all right. him and Snoop right. Dogg. Yeah. Like, even the whole brand. It looks really cool. Oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm so glad that he did that That's you're awesome. gonna fight a kid jerry you're gonna fight a kid <laughs> i just want to whoop somebody's ass all right? <laughs> <laughs> i don't want to lose this fucking thing it's my one fight it's my second fight i didn't uh, win the first one man. fuck you man i'm gonna scratch this kid bad across the chest <laughs> he's gonna have claw marks all over him fuck this kid man he's going down so anyway yeah he's got to be little and easy I want to go back and re- refight my first fight with, and just be cool, cool. more aware. Oh, that. I love that. That's a great idea. Those demons. Mm. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't like anything stupid or anything. I just, I was so shocked that this kid was punching me because he only had one arm. I just, I just feel and like by the time I figured again. out, you want to fight that fucker again? Well, by the time I figured out what was going on, like people people pulled everything away, and I was like, hey, "Come on!" It's like I, I can do better. Now. I was just about to get him, man. I was coming back. Uh, yeah. Baseball glove on one hand, you know, like I wasn't ready. I was like ten. I don't know what's worse. I want to fight a kid, or you want to go back and fight the one armed guy again? Well, that's when I was a kid, at least. <laughs> Fuck off, man. At least I have a reason to fight a kid. <laughs> I was trying to think of somebody evil. Like, who can I fight that's evil that's worth fighting now? Like, like, oh, that's like Hitler. Okay, I'll go fight Hitler. You know, I bet I could whoop his ass. But maybe not. Was he, like, fucking trained in some shit? No, no, man. He had a uh, very bad gastral. I just, like, part of, like... He had like bad uh, innards. He had bad innards. <laughs> the reason why he was so crazy, well, all that hate stuff, but um, what do you call it? In addition, he was hopped up on speed. Like, uh, in order to get over his uh, bad indigestion, he has basically like some type of disease in his stomach or whatever like that. The doctors just jacked him full of uh, speed. So that's why he was so, uh, when those speeches, but obviously he was performing, but uh, he was on speed. <laughs> I used to take Adderall. I know what that shit's like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my like gosh, that is crazy. But like, so yeah, he was, probably, he was getting that direct. But he was getting that direct. Like we're talking like needles and <clears throat> and stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And a sorry, well, all right. So, uh, okay, so Hitler, Hitler is my second choice then. Yeah, there you go. I could whoop, I could whoop his ass, and I feel comfortable doing it because he's not a kid. <laughs> yeah, you just <laughs> kick him in the gut, man, and fucking haul oh. over, and that's it, man. I like your thing though about like maybe like I wonder the kid who I fought my first time. I wonder what he looks like today, man. I wonder if I could take him. Like this, not like if I came back to like I actually want to fight this fucker now. Like I didn't want to fight that fight. I was like, oh, I guess I gotta fight. So maybe I should. That'd be kind of fun to relive it. But fuck all that shit. I want to know what the gladiator. Who does he? Who does he want to fight? Like he's got live or dead. What's this guy? Who are you gonna? Fight? You gotta answer your own well, question, bro. For sure, of course. There, there, there are so many different warriors of the world that I like. 
I would love to fight like Alexander the Great, like just going hand to hand combat with him or like, you know, any of the Spartans back in the day, like to really stack myself up to like an actual Spartan warrior and actually take on my actual bloodline. Like obviously it's a little complicated in that capacity, but uh, more in the sense to see if I could still stack up, obviously being a modern day gladiator. Jesus, so, you made both Jerry and I look like fucking pussies. <laughs> I think I did that on my own, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that didn't help any of <laughs> let's, flex, let's, let's go fight some kids, Jerry. <laughs> Oh shit, man! That's great. That's a great question, man. I he's gonna he's, he's, he's gonna go good. fight gladiator style. That's awesome. <laughs> I love that, man. That's fucking that's dope. That's epic. Yeah, that'll work. Oh shit, was that the last one? That was the last legacy question. That's right, man. That'll work, man. You uh, tell me about the do you do you cheat at poker? Do I do I pardon? Do you, yeah, right. you heard me. You heard me, man. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. That I is illegal, you Jerry. Good the other day, I saw you winning good the other day. I'm like, yeah, oh, he's kicking ass out there, man. Double aces and shit. No, no, I. He caught me so off guard there. Um, <laughs> hell no. I actually have a coach um, that nice. uh, well, we work with. That I work with. Uh, he's uh, another uh, a- um, another one of uh, athletes from uh, GG Poker. So um, offline, obviously not during the tournament. Yeah. Um, we definitely uh, we spruce up my uh, my my understanding of poker, and I've been getting better and better. I've been in the money quite a few times. So um, you know, I've uh, won more than I've lost, which is always a <laughs> a good right. thing. <laughs> Keeps you going. That's right, man. This guy. You, you have a poker sifu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick, he's the man. Wow, that's cool, man. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's a lot. You'd like it ain't. There's so much depth to it. Like those guys, there's so much to it, right? Did it oh, trip man. you out when you saw what was going on? Oh yeah, especially like it's a whole different game. It's a whole different ball game. Um, online poker, like uh, there, there's so much more math and so much more. Um, just you know, almost like instant component to it, right? Like it's there's just so much and um it's been a you know lifesaver having an expert if you will in in the field uh i've always kind of looked at myself in mixed martial arts as a a blank canvas that's why i think i was able to go you know relatively young at the age of like 20 21 uh and then run right to the major leagues because I kind of looked at myself as a blank canvas and I was always open to learn and grow more. You know what I mean? And then I'm the same way with, in, with regards to uh, poker as well. Nice, man. What do you, what do you pack in your vape when you're sitting down at the, uh, the table online? <laughs> Dr. Who, Dr. Dr. Who. Dr. Who. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And then again, Chocolo, <laughs> huge fan, Agent Orange. <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Do you uh, use any Bovita packs or boost packs or anything to keep your cannabis like moist or do you vape it all as soon as you get it? I vape it. And I see food died. I see it. I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely every once in a while, like uh, what's it called? Uh, on cha- ch- Bonveta or what, what's Bovita? the? Bovita. Yeah, Bovita. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have a yeah. bunch of those. Yeah. I have a bunch of those bad boys. Do you like them? Do you use them in all your stuff or only sometimes? Or what, what, what do you think of those? Sometimes. Uh, well, again, um, uh, it depends on what I have them in. Like the Mason jars, they last pretty long. Like in there, you're pretty good for quite some time. If you have anything in a bag like this mm-hmm. bad boy, then that there I was where I'd throw it in. Oh, that makes sense. I hadn't thought about that. So if you got something that's not as airtight, you want that pack in there to keep it regulated a little better. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. And thought of that. Yeah, especially if I'm opening it up, because like again, it's just a bigger component of me doing this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Versus that, I open it and close it airtight. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. Because there's going to be okay. air that's going to be trapped in there. I squeeze that shit out. Mm-hmm. Is that I how that. Canadian recreational comes in a Ziploc? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's very uh, regulated. Because again, uh, it's built off of actually the medical cannabis. Um, so Health Canada uh, regulates medical cannabis. Um, that's like our FDA, if you will. And um, 
they they regulate it and kind of they also regulate the recreational as well it's built off, off of that precedent and that uh framework yeah i, I recognize i was just messing with you <laughs> <laughs> cool i don't uh, want to keep any more of your time and no uh, one of the cool things uh, 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 next time i uh, i'd love to uh, i'd love to come on again and uh we can chat um when i got my new place uh, i i mentioned it to jerry um i don't remember if it, i I, t- I told you over email or one of our last chats or whatever like that but um in my new place i'm having this really cool centerpiece it's gonna be so freaking dope um the same my coach uh, my former coach uh friend trading partner he's gonna help me do it um and along with a couple other uh uh really cool uh companies that he knows and uh the teams behind that but um i'm gonna have an aquaponic system where it's gonna be two, it's gonna be a centerpiece. So I'm gonna have two aquariums. They're gonna probably be piranhas and shrimp and feeding them will feed the lily pads that are sitting on top of the the aquarium that will have two weed plants that are gonna intertwine like a helix and sprout out. And that's gonna be my bonsai tree. So I'm literally gonna, yeah. The only the way to feed my my weed is feed my fish. Yeah, that's cool shit. I've, I've seen some of those farms like that. That's that's badass, man. <clears throat> so that's what I'm really pumped about. I want to see it. Can't wait. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. I'll show it to you. That's dope. Yeah, we're gonna check that out, man. So I was um, fighting fish. I was gonna do fighting fish, but they can't be in a, a tank together. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure. I love this. Obviously, I'm a fighter, right? So it would have been so cool to have a bunch of different fighting fish, but they they're very like um, isolationist. They, they need to be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're very territorial. <laughs> you they get that mentality, man. Yeah, yeah, they just rip off their shirt. They rip off their shirt. And... <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> and they just right. all the other fish punch. got their cell phones out all the time, man. <laughs> Fucking video and shit. Crazy. <laughs> Well, I'd actually, if you've got a little more time, I'd like to hear a little more detail because I every time I mention this to somebody, they're fascinated by it, and I know our our, our, our viewers will. Your your cannabis routine while you're training, like like it's not just you know I'm I'm, I'm getting medicated all day. Like you mentioned CBD at night, but you're doing certain things at certain times because of certain needs, right? All day long. Yeah. So like basically. Uh, cause cannabis is both medicine, but it's also medicinal, right? So a lot of it has to do with how your body feels and every body and every body is different. So for mm-hmm. me, what I'm also doing is checking how my body feels because, uh, throughout <clears throat> camp, you're kind of, every day is different basically. Right. And your needs are different, but w- w- what that entails is my actual regimen will kind of alter and kind of work around that. But me as a patient, I'm constantly using cannabis Uh, in the many different holistic ways that you can do it. So for instance, uh, I mentioned rock cannabis. I'll put it in my smoothie. That's the way you can get the anti-inflammatories in there. Um, Just like other vegetables, uh, when you you cook any vegetables, you lose some of the minerals that way. Same thing when you uh, turn THCA into THC, you lose some of the minerals in the actual heat with the heat that's being added to it, right? So um, obviously THCA, um, if you if you don't um, add oil uh, or butter or whatever the case in regards to um, cooking it to make it an edible, uh, then uh, when you have it in the THCA form, there's no, um, there's no high because getting to THC with the heat it's not added- It's decarboxylated, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's the um, word, there we so, go. There you go. So THCA, the way I consume it with raw cannabis, adding it uh, into uh, a couple of, whether it's the the leaf and then also the actual bud itself. I add it to my smoothie with some kale, with, you know, um, other fruits and uh, protein as well. And that will allow me to get a, a nice healthy dose of anti-inflammatory properties uh, that come with uh, raw cannabis. I also do um, drops as well. Uh, I do a one to one. So I'll do uh, CBD and THC uh, drops. Um, and that too will allow me, again, um, adding more of the anti inflammatory, but then also having the entourage effect uh, with them both. Uh, because again, you know, as, as great as each individual 
a molecule is, uh, the plant itself is best um, used. Uh, it's my belief and many others that um, when you have the, the whole plant um, being used, uh, then you're actually really harnessing the plant itself. Obviously, there's, there's so many different cannabinoids that can be t uh, that can be you know used in many different great ways, but more specifically for me in my bilateral neuropathy, which I use cannabis for pain management, uh, the entourage effect is what works best. So then uh, from there, I'll either vaporize obviously with the mighty or have a volcano bag ready to go. Eventually, kind of you know stretch, kind of get in tune with my body, uh, and then from there I'll actually go to training. I'll train and then depending on how hard my body feels or how the training session was and how my body feels, that's when I, um, I'll vaporize again um, and then continue again to stretch or get some type of massage throughout the day uh, to recover before my next um, training session will be later in the day. Uh, and then from there, do much the same where I'll vaporize uh, again uh, cannabis after training. And then uh, from there, uh, towards the evening, I'll uh, start uh, doing the more more potent uh, THC and again more in the indica, if you will, strains, the more pain uh, management strains that uh, can help me uh, with any type of pain or discomfort that comes with my condition, or just again another hard day uh, at work. Uh, as you could imagine, there's a lot of wear and tear in what I do. So obviously cannabis is a, you know, a much healthier medicine for me personally. And, uh, and that's why I use it. And uh, that's why um, I find so hard, uh, you know, to basically be able to compete at a level playing field because uh, there, you know, there isn't an issue for whatever reason for um, someone to be able to smash a handful of Vicodins um, before a fight, but uh, you know, a, a joint, mm -hmm or a vaporized session that you had a week before a fight can land you suspended longer than any steroid. So you're doing one to one in the morning with your, with your, for the most part. And, and what's, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time in that one to one. I, I want to, I want to, what's that all about? Does that give you, does that mess with your head or keep you no, still? What is that? The, the, uh, what's called the one to one. It's more in regards to like, again, because the way the drops, kind of work it's uh, obviously they are it's less of a again i have a higher tolerance than most i'm sure i'm, I'm speaking to the choir here <laughs> but um basically um i don't necessarily get high off of it but i do get some of that euphoria some of that um you know relaxation that um okay. cbd um is kind of known for and um Again, it's not a high, especially to me, um, but I, I think it definitely helps uh, prime my body in the capacity that overall dose of cannabis and cannabinoids that I'm constantly putting in my body. Um, I guarantee you I could have like a thousand nanograms at any given time. And it's funny because um, the actual ban is uh, on uh, the the uh, the limit on the ban is usually like 100 and 150. 125 um, nanograms where I could have like a thousand to two thousand nanograms at any given moment. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's yeah, you're not passing any of those tests. So. Not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then so then you go from that to what we normally hit, just as typical yeah. THC kind of dominant strain. And that mm -hmm. is for the pain management throughout the day. Yeah. And but again, uh especially more the the up uh, the more upbeat um, strains as well um, okay. throughout the day, uh, because uh, again, I am I am very much go 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 all day, so um, getting some energy from it is uh, definitely a, a plus uh, in the, uh, the the schedule and also the regimen that I have as an athlete. Okay, but now then at the end you wind down with an indica THC, mm -hmm. yeah, but then. Like when when do you do that, and then when do you do the CBD so that you can get your dreams? Because I'm mean, this this I gotta know. Like at what point in time do I need to make the switch to be able to do the dreams again? Remember those? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, again, I'm lucky enough 
that I also have uh, access to uh, CBD flower as well. Um, so then I'll, I'll switch uh, the indicas a little bit in the later in the evening. So I'll, I'll after let's say a training session, I'll start at seven, finish at nine. It, right away, I'll kind of uh, go to the indica. I'm a little bit of a late, late sleeper. Like you know what I mean. So I don't really go to bed till like twelve, one o'clock, where um, I'll be medicating with indica right away. And then by the time I get home, kind of chill out. That's when I can switch to uh, CBD flower. Um, and then from there, you can go high, just the pure CBD drops as well. Um, and just loading up on that, those two will allow you to kind of uh, counteract um, the THC. Do guys like us need more CBD to get it back? Is it not just doing some, we got to do a lot because we're doing the tolerance thing? Our higher, you- I hire, our higher, um, use would definitely probably uh, contribute to the amount that it would take. But, um, you know, it really works. And again, it, it's it's kind of uh, pretty well known in the capacity of uh, same thing with um, if anyone's too high, CBD helps yeah. uh, counteract the same thing um, with your dreams. Get the fuck out. So you're not a doctor, but I mean, what would you yeah, recommend exactly. for a high tolerance guy? Like we're talking <laughs> 300, 500 milligrams or just 200. Or, I mean, what, what's a ballpark? Like what? I, I mean, I'll like, do those little droppers and they're nothing. They're 50 milligrams. I'm like, it's a waste on me, man. I need tons yeah, of stuff. I understand. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really lucky that I have uh, a couple of great sponsors that uh, help with that capacity. Um, I'd know. probably say about 150, 200 kind of uh, okay. milligrams but everyone's different right yeah well i'll start there and see what's up then that's more than i normally give it a shot for so i'd also so throw you, a little you. bit of uh, i would throw in a little bit of um cbd flour as well yeah well you're doing that in the evening anyhow this is on top of yeah. that right so yeah yeah so i could i could start maybe my last couple of bowls could be cbd flour and then i can really really start hitting the drops on the way into bed there you go i'm what, gonna give it a what shot what time man. do you stop thc Every day, I don't do it all every single day, um, but I tend to do it probably like every other day kind of thing. So you you quit your THC uh, usually around, around when? Around uh, 11, like uh, around 11. A couple hours. If I'm actually, okay. Yeah, a couple hours beforehand. Sweet. All right, dude, this is great. Thank you, man. I love it when we can get these kind of tips on shit to do. So, hey, um, Elias, what's your nickname these days, man? You've had a lot of them, right? Yeah, I'm going with the kind of the main event, M-A-N-E. You should with those locks, man. I love it. Did you have, did you have the... Was it Spartan the, for a while. The Spartan. Yeah, that's right. I like that, man. I like that. It goes back to our, uh, the, <clears throat> the the question, I guess, right? Who had... Like, my uh, my mom's from that area in the ancient uh, Greece and all that stuff. Kind of would want to go hand-to-hand with one of those mofos. Yeah, that's cool, man. Oh, give us... Give us some real good main throwing scenes so at Carrots, our, our video editor, can can make some really nice uh, video transitions for the main event. Do you want to, like, so I got to introduce myself, I'm saying? No, you can just, just throw your hair around, give some nice visuals, but like, <laughs> like you were doing earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's it, baby. We just want to see it. There you go. <laughs> like, like, you know, like when you're doing the, um, the Ring Boy stuff, man. You get, get it, yeah. Yeah, now we got it. What do you get? Yeah. <laughs> this this is like a very different this turn. Guy. This is like a very different turn. <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> That's, I'm, what are you talking? I'm learning here, man. I'm picking up some moves. I was I was gonna say the show is the uh like, do you have to do the thing like where you face off the dude like the day before the show, like when you weigh in or whatever, and you like just stand oh, yeah. nose to nose, like you're about to kiss for like two minutes? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is yeah, that awkward? Is, is that is yeah, that as ridiculous as it 
Nice. I've done it. I've done it where like I faced off in the middle and I'd be like, boop. And I just poke, <laughs> boop them right in the nose. <laughs> and they got so mad. Or like we're like this on. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> and it just totally because they're trying to put like all machismo, like they're trying to be like so serious yeah. and fierce. <laughs> Actually, the craziest thing I've done, I was trying to break. I, 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 I think I did. This guy, he, he, um, uh, he was from Brazil. His name is Cesar Ferreira, and um, I, I like he he had like a whole group of dudes that were. There were a bunch of people from Brazil and they kind of like were all hanging out, like clicking with each other. And uh, there's one time like I was in, because uh, we're all in a host hotel. I was in a uh, hot tub by myself because my coach is kind of left. I said, yeah, I'll just wait by myself. And he came and it was right then. Like, do you get nervous? Do you show? I'm like, I'm just going to run with it. So he saw me and he kind of like waited away where his other friends kind of stayed in and kind of like were around me and I was just being friendly with them this that and the other and then like he eventually got like weirded out because like uh, my vibes were like overtaking the room that they left and then like I would see them throughout the rest of the week and I was just trying to like kill him with kindness I heard it was his <laughs> birthday like I saw like oh it's gonna be your birthday blah 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 and he's just getting so mad about it and then like I was just kind of just befriending him like every time I see him It'd be, I happen to be by myself and he's with like 10 people and I'm just like, just still, I, I was killing his vibe. Like he was, like, <laughs> he, cause he couldn't just contain it, these emotions that he had that it, cause it was, we're gonna fight, like we're gonna fight, whatever. Like we, you know what I mean? Like it's whatever. So the point was his birthday, right? So I bought him a cake and on weigh-ins, uh, I had it ready and it said, happy birthday health happiness but sorry for the l and i gave it to him on way and he, he read it he looks at it he really looks at me he looks at it and he just like yells at me in portuguese and just like and just like yells at me and just walks off and i just kind of oh, look i look awesome. i look at the camera afterwards and i'm just like like and kind of like them then i beat him and then i ate the cake was it delicious it was so delicious this was red velvet I don't know. I don't have to fight angry. No, it's good. Breaks the stereotype. I like that. There you go. No. Why? Why not? Is it just because you, you dig it, or you're relaxed, or are you relaxed yeah. when you go in there? Yeah, for the most part. But I try to be as in the moment as possible. Well, what actually scares you? Getting into a cage with somebody who wants to beat the shit out of you, doesn't? Well, you want to be in the moment. I, I kind of don't want to black out like a goat. <laughs> yeah, but what do you fear, man? What, what what scares you? You know what I mean? Heights, heights, heights. Terrified of heights. Can't fly. <laughs> I can fight a no man. No shit. Can't fly. <laughs> no shit. So you had to drive to Colorado, huh? <laughs> no, no, I can fly. I, I believe in technology. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I know people. I'm wondering, man. You can't, you know you can't stand on a chair to change the light bulb. <laughs> That's right. Forget that, man. Everyone has their price. Right, right. Everyone has their price. So I ladder matches climb are a ladder. No, no. Ladder matches are definitely the rule for the right price. All right. Mm -hmm. When are we going to talk again, Elias? Like I said, uh, when I have my fight um, kind of set, we'd love to catch up then, kind of talk about where I'm fighting, uh, who I'm fighting, all that fun stuff. And then uh, I guess if I'm on the next, I might have to have another question. <laughs> I yeah, have another question that'd be great, ready. man. Yeah. That'd be great. That would uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Then we can catch you uh, around whoever you're fighting too, and all that stuff. So doesn't matter what his name is. He's a dead man. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's gonna be dope, man. I uh, love it. Well, dude, um, thanks for thanks again for coming on and uh, and interviewing. And I love. Thanks it, for man. taking your time. Thanks, oh, thanks for pleasure. taking your time on today. Yeah, dude, this has been fun. I can't wait to see you fight, and uh, we'll talk soon. But man, that's awesome, man. Thank, thanks again. Yeah. It's been a blast. Always, always, my pleasure. Right, Peace. Oh, yeah. All right, until Peace. next time. Peace. Until next time. Have a great one, guys. You too, man. Mm -hmm.